This week in PlayStation, we're talking about the next phase of Neil Druckmann's career. How does Resistance Retribution hold up? And how PlayStation recovers from this week's round of layoffs? We'll have all this and more because this is PSI Love You XOXO. <laughs> Welcome to PS I Love You XOXO, your weekly PlayStation conversation. That's blessing. I'm Greg. And if you love what we do, please pick up that kind of funny membership on Patreon or YouTube. Of course, you'd be able to watch each and every episode of PS I Love You XOXO live as we record it, just like Ronald Brown is, Mr. Carta is, and Jonathan Santos are. Of course, they're also going to get this show ad free. They'd have the ability to watch our other podcasts get recorded live and ad free as we record them. You get them ad free on demand as well and of course you get the daily gregway vlogs you can get ps i love you xoxo for free with ads and without the exclusive content on youtube and podcast services around the globe each and every week thank you to our patreon producers carl jacobs streaking ain't easy and delaney twining today we're brought to you by avatar braving the elements and game showdown but let's start with a psn message from you blessing greg we have side tables now for the drinks. We do. Makes things a lot easier. I yeah. didn't touch my drink last week once because <laughs> it was on this table. And so I was like, I didn't want to lean forward and move over my laptop. Sure. And so I was sure. doing all the show with dry mouth. What do I got to do to get you to give up on the mouse? That's the What's wrong with thing. the mouse? Why do you need... Like, I understand the mouse at your desk. I use a mouse at my desk with mm -hmm. my laptop. But when I go mobile... I just use the touchpad. Is the touchpad not great on that? Is it? What's the problem? No, I mean, I just have less, like... I don't know. I can't move as quick and as like accurately as I need to. I, I like if I'm switching between tabs. If you bring up like I don't know, Banishers, Ghosts of New Eden, and I'm like, ooh, what's who's the developer on that? Yeah. Well, the mouse is easy. Don't know. It was. I mean, just memorize it. You know. I mean, that I could do also, but sometimes we bring up even deeper cut stuff. You know. Sure. Sure. Who invented Konami? <laughs> <laughs> who invented it? And like they found it. Invented. Yeah. It. Who invented Konami? And like on a touchpad, it's like, oh, all right. Let me like fucking. Uh, now I gotta. Now I have to tap the thing. And hopefully, it doesn't register as a double tap. God. Oh God, no. That's yeah. Not not type of the thing. And double not, taps. Not to move over the mouse. Whereas, like with a mouse, with an actual mouse, it's like yeah. boom. But also okay. at the same time, bless as you're doing that, put your hand on the mouse and then put your hand on the glass of water. It's See? like, I don't Double know, there's something, there's something about there's this. There's something powerful about this, yeah. Like, I don't I, like it. I, I feel like I'm, like, <laughs> at peak power right now. I can See, do anything you want. Ask me who's the president of Konami right now, who invented it. <laughs> <laughs> who invented Konami, bless? <laughs> oh, it is uh, Kagemasa Kazuki. Okay. Yeah. When did that happen? 1969. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there you go. You know I mean? There you go. I literally typed in who invented Konami, and like, of Google did do the thing where it brought up the. It big rolled answer. its eyes at you, and then was like, like, "Here's you the know, answer." Yeah. I feel at peak power nowadays in my car. I feel like because I got the phone on the mount. Yeah. And then I got like the you know the Apple CarPlay there in the center. And then I got, and I'm driving, right? So then I'm like hitting the texts and I'm dictating the texts. And then I uh, red light, I look at Twitter or whatever. I'm recording the show. No, don't do anymore. that. I do all of this. <laughs> all really happens. Yeah. Jeez. No, but I mean, I, come on now. Mm -hmm. Other people don't text while you drive, sure, but I never, it's never in my hand. It's literally, I'm sitting at the red light. I'll I mean, even I, still, this is like scroll. a level of distraction. Because are you scroll. seeing, like, are you at, at the red light? Are you, how often is the person in front of you going and you look up and you're like, oh shit, it's my turn? Like, no, 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 no. Really? I, like, I'm super. I am adamant about not being that guy or endangering my life or anybody else's for that matter. Okay. So it is very much like it's San Francisco traffic. Like we're stopped. Like it's not like, mm. oh, it's going to roll in five seconds. I'll just do a quick little what's happened on Instagram thing. No, no. I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm being responsible. Did you know that Konami originated as a jukebox rental and repair business? I did not know that. Yeah. Nintendo playing cards. Ah, uh, the PSN message this week comes from Daredevil underscore NB, who wrote in and said, Saw Resistance Retribution on the PlayStation Store. Saw you, Greg, reviewed the original. Don't think you guys mentioned it on KFGD. First off, we for sure did. Uh, I know you're busy, but I would love to hear your thoughts on the port. You say they wrote in. Yeah. By wrote in, you mean they, they sent you a DM. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was a really good DM, you know what I mean? I don't check all my Instagram DMs, you know what I mean? A lot of general people in the tab there. But I think I, at some point with Daredevil, I must have shared. When you share someone's thing to your story, then it opens up, a, like, oh, you can, they can, they're DMing you as if I've been DMing yeah. you. Do you see that they do, that now Instagram's changed it to where 
if you message request somebody, right, which is like you don't follow them, you send them a message. Yeah. Now you can only do it once. Oh, I didn't like know you that. can't send like people. There sometimes there'll be people people in my message requests that'll be sending me like ten messages or whatever. Yeah, 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 now yeah. you only get one shot to make a first impression. And I find that fast. But do you go through your requests? Yeah, but I don't. I don't. I never. I, That's I my thing is I never do. So I go in there and it's like, oh, I really should have looked at this a long time ago. I shouldn't say this on content. I see every single message request I get on Instagram. Like okay. I look at all of them. I don't respond to most of them because What's then the I'm opening the door. What's the key way to get in? What's the key way? I mean, to get I'm in? at Blessing Junior, right? Like, I yeah, think no, I know that, but I'm saying like, what, what would, what would make you engage? With oh, the, I activate it, like make it so that there's a back and forth. I don't know if there's anything. Like it would have to be like, oh, you're somebody that like. I want to be friends with or like somebody like who I know from the industry or that I met before. Okay. If you're a stranger sending me a message request, yeah, 99% I'm not going to accept it. I don't know what would. I think I used to, a year one of working at Kind of Funny, I did accept a lot of them. Yeah. So now I get a lot of messages from those people. Yeah. And it's, Shut up, loser. Yeah, and I can't. You were just a stepping stone to get <laughs> I, through one of them. I can't un, like. Exactly. You, you can't leave it. once you do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah and so annoying. now I'm just like, well, you know, now we're just homies now. <laughs> like, all so that was the thing with this one. Daredevil thing where it's like, I don't know if I've ever responded to Daredevil, mm -hmm. but I saw the little one on my messages and I opened it up. I'm like, oh, it's one of these. And I read this question. I'm like, this is a pretty good question. You should, of course, write in to be, for free to be part of the show. Kindoffunny.com slash P-S-I-L-Y. But if you have the ability to DM me, I guess go for it. Zip along in chat makes a good point. I'm sorry, this is unrelated. There's a touchscreen on my computer. I keep forgetting that this surface, these Christ. surfaces are touchscreen. I... Because I, I, I've, never, I've never had a touchscreen laptop before. Yeah. So it's just foreign to me. But yeah, that's a good point. I don't need this fucking mouse. Who's the president of Konami? <laughs> Resistance <laughs> Retribution, ladies and gentlemen, came out in March 2009, and I, Greg Miller, did in fact review it way back in the day on the PSP at IGN.com, a place you probably didn't know I worked at. I gave it a 9.2, amazing wow. on the kind of funny scale, and this was my verdict. <clears throat> so yeah, I liked Resistance Retribution a lot. I think it's probably one of the most complete packages ever to come to the PSP. It has an engaging storyline, a likable main character, tons of reasons to play it again, and one of the greatest multiplayer outings we've ever seen on the system. I think the setup might tread a little bit too close to its siphon filter roots, and I wish the gameplay was just a bit more challenging as a standalone product, but those minor gripes shouldn't keep anyone from playing this excellent game. I stopped everything. For a couple hours yesterday mm -hmm. and booted up resistance retribution oh i actually went in and i played i popped a couple trophies i had some fun in there whatever and it was like what a fucking trip because mm -hmm. you talk i mean throughout the years i'm sure i've talked on many a beyond on many a ps i love you about resistance retribution what a great psp game and i don't think anything i'm gonna say today takes away from how good of a psp game it was in 2009 but it's crazy to play this on a, on a PlayStation 5 in a modern setting and be like, wow, wow. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just like, I, my review starts, and I was reading it before I played it, right? Of like, there's this giant graph where I like just summarize the, like all the story and where we're set up. And I'm like, damn, that's a lot of information. People must've been pissed that I was spoiling the game. And then in the review, I go, and that's just the opening cutscene. Oh, and then wow. you go and you play the opening cutscene. I'm like, <laughs> Man, there's a lot of exposition here. Uh -huh. They are really intent on putting us in the boots of one James Grayson to get going. And then you play and it's, you know, it's a PSP game from 2009, right? Like very barren environments, you know, not the textures are not good on the walls. Mm -hmm. uh, my notes, what I got here, I say the music's still good. I did not. It's funny playing it now. Immediately, Nolan North jumps out as me is doing this guy with a French accent. And I was like, oh, I didn't. Re I would never even been able to tell you Nolan was in this game, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the game is stiff as hell. Again, it's a PSP game. I, this is to be expected, I would imagine, right? Or like the turning radius. Your sh I, one of my notes here is it's embarrassing that there's no feedback hitting an enemy. Like for some chimera, you do hit them and like, oh, oh. but there was a section of the game where I was just brr, 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 and they're just like the bullets are entering their bodies and there's like no reaction. And then they keel over. Oh, wow. It was like, wow, that's not, you know, they just stand and the bullets go through them. However, what I found the most interesting Yesterday playing it and taking my little notes here, I wrote Nathan Grayson sucks question mark because I always remember him being a Nathan good Grayson? protagonist. Yeah, he's the main character here. I always remember him being a good character and yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. I then while I ate lunch today, read my review and I just titled this. What a difference 15 years makes. Here's what I wrote in my review. From the moment he had to shoot his brother, I was drawn to Grayson, a smart ass and a badass. Grayson's that adult character we haven't seen much on the PSP. He curses, he screws, and he's only helping the McKee and the British Marines out because he made a promise to himself to kill every chimera he possibly could. 
Coward. You should have said fucks. I know, right? These fucking <laughs> Wait, James Grayson, IG. right? Yeah, what did I say? You said Nathan Grayson. That's why. I'll say, yeah, confused. Nathan Grayson is a person I think we know in real life. Yeah, that, yeah, he, he writes about video games. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Good call. That's thank you very much. My notes are wrong. James Grayson is correct. James Grayson is correct. It's, but now you back to pick apart my writing. I mean, a smart ass, a badass. Listen. Grayson, Grayson's that adult character. We haven't seen much on the PSP. He's adult, of course, because uh, that's me in parentheses. Then going back to old Greg, he curses, he screws, and he's only helping the McKee and British Marines out. Now, again, I'll give 2009 Greggy a pass in the fact that he played this game multiple times, right? So it's like mm -hmm. a 10 hour campaign. I'm going off of the first hour, hour and a half or whatever of screwing around with this and being like, well, this James Grayson guy sucks. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's just he's just mad at everybody. He's being an asshole. I mean, that's what writing was in 2009. Yeah. Right? Like, I, Especially as like, low as the bar was then for video games writing. Yeah. As low as the bar was for a, a PSP story that you're getting. I'm pretty sure this is, today is the first day I'm seeing re Resistance Retribution gameplay. Mm. Uh, this is one that... Uh, like I wasn't a resistance person yeah. um, around that time. See, like, I wasn't either. I was just a PSP guy. Yeah, and I didn't even have like a PSP around that time, right? And so like resistance retribution was double something I was not paying attention to. And as they describe it, it sounds like a 2009 first person shooter, right? Sure. Like even as third, I'm as I'm third. looking at it, like you know, brown bland protagonist yeah, yeah, yeah. you're talking about with James Grayson. The uh, uh, like a lot of exposition, <laughs> but <Grace>. not great. <laughs> it's funny as hell now that you think about can, Nathan. Can I also just talk about the this video as well? This is this is like how they fan... promoted PSP games. They're like, well, Yo, put a PSP. This is not like a fan edited video that like uh, superimposed like the trailer onto a PSP. This is an official PlayStation video. Yeah, official oh PlayStation trailer. Why was this the way you would showcase a trailer? This is awful. It it didn't handheld. up res well, so you wanted to keep it as small as possible yeah. on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably that's a really good PSP. point. And then, yeah, you can hold. Remember, this is something you can hold in your hand and play. Yeah, of course. Supposed to it's a handheld TV, adventure. Yeah, it was still quite the impressive multiplayer suite. They had clans, they had leaderboards, they had all this different stuff. They had challenges. Like there was a, this game did a bunch of awesome stuff. Mm -hmm. Of like you know you could tether it to your PlayStation Three to unlock different modes in both Resistance Two, right, and Resistance Retribution on the thing. Like they, had, they had a bunch of cool shit going on here. Did you pay for premium to do this? Oh no! I asked for a code because you can also just buy the game straight up for ten bucks. Wait, really? Yeah. Is that true for like all the premium games? Unknown. Or is that just this? Resistance okay. Retribution is on the store for ten bucks, and I didn't but realize it's also that. part of the uh, PS Plus Premium. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah, because I was on the fence of, oh, should I just buy it because I could, I saw that I could buy it or whatever? Should I? Maybe I'm. It's possible since mm -hmm. I didn't click through to do it that it would have been like, oh, it's ten bucks, and I clicked and it's like, oh, it's ten bucks to upgrade your plus, but it's not. That's not what it said on the thing. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Speaking of a dead platform, yeah, I started playing a PSVR two game <laughs> the other day. <laughs> got him, got him, got him. <laughs> got him. Oh man, they're already mad at me. I can't make them more mad. Um, they're always mad. I got an email about this game called Beat the Beats. Beat the Beats, which is a VR boxing rhythm game. Uh -huh. And when I saw the email, like the email came with like gifs and clips and stuff, and it looks like a Beat Saber type of thing. Okay. And I'm like, well, I but love Beat Saber. Yeah, okay. but it's boxing. And that just sounded like that sounded great to me, right? Like looking at the clip, I was like, oh shit, okay, so I am just the doing beats. I'm doing all the Beat Saber shit, but I am like fucking punching these things and then dodging. This seems like a great way to throw out your shoulder. And <laughs> I started so I I um got a code for it. Yeah. I got home and i was like all right let me check out this beat the Be beats game then i realized that i left my psvr2 at work yeah and so i was like i'll just play at work tomorrow so like yesterday came in booted up the ps5 after our ga games daily or whatever and i charged my controllers a little bit because of course i'm not used to this thing in like maybe half a year at this point <laughs> start playing it and it's really fun i think it might be an easy way to throw out your shoulder because especially when i'm doing like the dodges right like they have this thing that'll come through where you have to dodge left or right yeah, yeah, and yeah. i do want to compliment they do it re-entering PSVR 2 for the first time in a while is a good reminder of how cool the um, haptic feedback on the headset is. Sure. Because it is like, I am, they have like this big air, arrow essentially that's like coming around and, and is about to hit me so I dodge, right? But as it's <clears throat> as it's um, passing by my right side, Jeez. I can feel like a nice. like on in the haptic feedback on my headset, which is really cool. And then yeah, like it is, I'm uh, throwing straight jabs at these, bo at these boxes which are similar to beat, beat Saber boxes that are color-coded. So you know whether to throw with your right or your left. Um, I'm throwing jabs. I'm doing hooks, and then they have uppercuts. I'm not gone far enough to get like in the trailer we were watching earlier. They had like blocking and stuff like that. Yeah, I didn't yeah, get yeah. that far yet. But in the first what 30 minutes that I played uh, yesterday at the office, one it was fun to like 
hear people in the background being like, what a dork. <laughs> Which I think it was you, It actually. wasn't even in the background. I, tried, I looked right at you. I was like, you dork. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like I was talking shit behind you. I was talking it straight to your yeah, face. People you finally see hearing me. what people feel, actually feel about me in this office calling me dorks. I, I got to <laughs> overhear it. I know the truth. But I was, yeah, like hearing that. But then also like being in it and being like, this is fun. Like, yeah, okay. I really, yeah, like I'm really, I, I have such a good time with VR when it is rhythm games like that like yeah. the on rails like whether it be i mean beat saber is the easiest answer but i also go did back did you ever to, do supernatural or oh yeah i, I yeah, did okay, super, okay. supernatural i had fun with supernatural uh pistol whip is another one that yeah, I throw in there. that's really fun and then this reminded me also of just the feeling of being in thumper and i think part thumper. of that is really kind of just being transported to this other location thumper yeah, does a good yeah. job with that and this i think how clean it is and how like how good the music is too okay like, I, is it licensed or is it original i have to assume are it's there lyrics or is it I, just like ings? There's, yeah, there's some, some lyrics to it. Um, so I'm, I'm not positive, but I have to assume that it's licensed. I'm like looking at the email right now to see if they say it, but I can't find anything. But the music is good. Like It's like a, a lot of EDM, a lot of like dance music type stuff, but I found myself getting really into it. But I just want to throw that out there because I was like, well, I might as well talk about this somewhere. I like you did that. Cameron Kennedy in the live chat watching with his Patreon member, or his kind of funny membership, says, chat. Is this one of the last three games Blessing will ever play on PlayStation VR? Today? Wow. I mean, if I had to answer that, the, one of the last three games, so I got yep, two more left. You got in two me. more in you. My question is, is, is it the last game I play on PSVR 2? <laughs> I can't think of another game I'm going to pick this thing up yeah, for. Yeah, I know. They're not doing a great job of telling you what what's... The, they're, they're not doing a great job of telling you what's next, and they're also fucking making it sound like they're out of the VR What was business. the VR games they announced at the last PlayStation State of Showcase? Fucking Candle, and then... Uh, candle. <laughs> Working Project X. I don't know. They put up a bunch of... I mean, all the games... Oh, you know what? I'm thinking of... There was the one I made fun of that was like... The, so there's the Metro game. Metro Last VR Experience. There's that one, and then... You gonna the, play that? Probably not, no. I'm yeah. not... I, I never played Metro. And then there was the one that no came out... No matter what Janet asked. <laughs> <laughs> there was another... There was one that came out a couple weeks ago that, like, had people... The, the trailer I remember where people, like fucking up skeletons and shit and like it, it oh, came after it that metro trailer it looked janky it but looked it super janky cool. but yeah, then yeah, the yeah, reviews yeah. came out and people were like oh this is really fun um obviously i've not picked that up <laughs> and Here's, so I, think, I don't know i don't think is, i'll ever pick this thing this up again deviates a bit from it, the playstation vr question but stick with me because it is the same thing the reviews were like oh this is fun and you didn't fucking touch it yeah of course asgard's wrath 10 out of 10 on meta quest you ever gonna touch that no yeah see, i, I thought i would i thought it might have but yeah i never touched it it's fair enough. It would fair have enough. to be. I think if Half Life Alex ever comes to PSVR two, I might play it. Like emphasis on emphasis on might. Yeah, I would like to play it, but it it is a hassle. Like me even setting up the VR two yesterday, I was like, all right, let's do this thing. Oh shit, these aren't charged. All right, let's do that a little bit. Okay, let's get out these wires. And it felt like it felt it felt like a throwback let's to PSVR one. These wires. <laughs> <laughs> the like one it, <laughs> USB C wire. Uh, this is fucking too but much. No, but it was also just charging the controllers where I'm like, all right, I'll use the front port of my PSVR 2 for this one controller, and then I'll plug this other controller to my USB C that's connected to the outlet. And so I have three things connected at the same time and giving it some minutes so that I can get it in play. Yeah. yeah it was yeah, just yeah. too much of a thing. Um, but yeah, Half Life Alex is a maybe, and then from there, I don't know, man. I don't, it would have to be another Beat Saber like thing. I like these kind of games. Yeah. But also, are I you coming back kind of to beat the beat? Maybe. Okay. Yeah, maybe like... Uh, is this going to be enough for you to bring the PlayStation VR 2 home and be like, I'm going to do this? Yeah, I think so. Okay. But I also think I only have one or two sessions in me. Okay. Sure, yeah, sure. like I don't think I'm going to be trying to get the high scores. And like, the I'm going to walk I just want to... Yeah, I just want to <laughs> see through the rest of the songs because I really like the songs and I really okay. like... And I want to get to where I'm blocking shit. Sure. Yeah. Gotta love blocking shit, you know? Yeah, I love blocking Uh Let's take this conversation about VR and PlayStation's future with it. It's the topic of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I don't yeah, know I held it for the graphic. I, 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 I hit the button. The button was like, fuck you. Kevin likes to come in here and take away things. You know that. Wait, is this... Did you hit it again? There, yeah, no, I, I hit it directly in OBS. That, gotcha. God, I was going to say, that'd yeah. be fucking awesome. <laughs> the button now has a 15-second delay. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I don't know what happened. <laughs> We're like outroing. There's an ad. It's like... <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, this week on Tuesday... PlayStation shocked the world by laying off a bunch of people, closing some stuff, making a bunch of crazy announcements. We'll read briefly from IGN where Wesley Yin Pool writes, Sony has announced a significant round of layoffs affecting around 900 staff or about 8% of its global PlayStation workforce. The layoffs affect a number of PlayStation studios, including Insomniac, Naughty Dog, Gorilla, Fire Sprite, 
and most significantly, PlayStation's London studio. Alongside the layoff, a number of in-development games are canceled, Sony said. Uh, this is where Jason Schreier at Bloomberg added Guerrilla Games is cutting 10% of its staff, roughly 40 employees, according to people familiar with the matter. As all this was happening, Jim Ryan went on the record with this quote, The industry has changed immensely, and we need to future ready ourselves to set up the business of, for, I'm sorry, to set up, to set the business up for what lies ahead. We need to deliver on expectations from developers and gamers and continue to propel future technology and gaming. So we took a step back to ensure we are set up to continue bringing the best gaming experiences to the community. Our plans for reorganizing and streamlining are so we can continue to deliver the best gaming experiences possible. Uh, of course, we talked about the uh, the Naughty Dog, the Gorilla, the layoffs there, and it was referenced this PlayStation London Studios. There it goes. Sony has proposed shutting the PlayStation London Studio, just shuttering it, closing it, being done with it. Of course, they had previously created VR games entirely and the getaway and stuff like that. <clears throat> While we're there, we'll bring in another part of Wesley's reporting from that day, where he's talking about Sony reportedly canceling a Twisted Metal live service game. Uh, he goes, Bloomberg reporter Jason Schreier said the game was in early development at UK studio Fire Sprite, which Sony had earlier confirmed is affected by the job cuts. According to Schreier, the Twisted Metal game, quote, wasn't green lit yet. Uh, Herman Hulse had said this, quote, we looked at our studios and our portfolio, evaluating projects in various stages of development, and decided that some of those projects will not move forward. I want to be clear that the decision to stop work on these projects is not a reflection on the talent or passion of the team members. Our philosophy has always been to, create, uh, to allow creative experimentation. Sometimes, great ideas don't become great games. Sometimes, a project is started with the best intentions before shifts within the market or industry result in a change of plan. There's a few details I'll throw in here, too, that are like, uh, updates uh, uh, within all this going on, right? Uh, I have a few that I'm pulling from PlayStation Lifestyle, where in the midst of the... Um, you know, Gorilla losing 10% of, uh, of his staff and also uh, London Studio getting closed. They mentioned that like Media Molecule barely escaped closure. This is based off of uh, journalist Ethan Gotch, who said uh, he had heard from a source last December that Sony was considering closing down both London Studio as well as Media Molecule. Uh, the latter was speculated to be a candidate for closure after losing its co-founder and going through layoffs. However, it was London Studio that ended up uh, uh, on the chopping block uh, this week. Uh, there was that there was a confirmation from Jason Schreier that uh, Gorilla is still working on their multiplayer game. Um, uh, I, there are two. There are multiple multiplayer games. I think there's like the one from well, Soft and then one from Gorilla. I was gonna say yeah, Gorilla yeah. is doing a traditional multiplayer game, and this is all rumored, right? Or rumor, like, yeah, rumor. Uh, uh, that and then NC Soft is supposed to be doing like the Horizon MMO. Yeah. So somebody had asked Jason like, "Is that multiplayer game still happening?" And he was like, "Yeah." Uh, there was that, and then. Um, I mean, there's like a lot of stuff, but they, the Insomniac also put up a statement that was essentially expressing sorrow over layoffs as well, um, and a bit of anger. Yeah, if you want to talk about that, if you have it pulled up to read it, I think that'd be valuable yeah. to the discussion because, of course, these uh, studios that were affected really didn't say anything. A lot of developers have said things, sure, but Insomniac put up this statement. So they say, like several other teams across SIE and PlayStation Studios, Insomniac Games was impacted by yesterday's layoffs. There are no sufficient words to express our feelings about it. This is a solemn and unprecedented moment for our studio. We're focusing our energy on helping everyone affected through this challenging time. For those who are hiring, there are great people seeking new roles who made important co contributions to Insomniac's history. We're extremely grateful uh, for them, uh, and they will be missed. You talk about the cuts, you talk about the uh, closures of certain studios, Media Molecule apparently rumoredly uh, just dodging it, right? Mm. Another interesting wrinkle in the uh, aftermath of Tuesday's announcements, right, is of course this conversation about Twisted Metal being canceled and being worked on at, at Fire Sprite, right? But then today, uh, Ed Nightingale over at Eurogamer put up the thing, uh, the thing, the mm. story you call them. Sony studio Fire Sprite has been shedding talent admit, amidst accusations of toxic culture, staff say. Uh, Sony acquired studio Fire Sprite has uh, recently suffered high profile exits amid accusations of toxic workplace culture, Eurogamer has been told, as part of an investigation into the studio begun ahead of the layoffs announced at Sony this week. The Liverpool-based developer released PlayStation VR 2 launch title Horizon Call of the Mountain last year after being by, acquired by Sony in 2021. But the impact of crunch for that game's release and changes in the company's senior leadership have subsequently led to discontent within the studio, staff have told Eurogamer, something one source described as death by a thousand cuts. 
Most concerning are reports from sources that two senior leaders from Sony support studio XDev brought in to help lead Fire Sprite have since been accused of sexual discrimination and ageism. A subsequent internal investigation by Sony is said to have resulted in the claims being dismissed as, quote, a misunderstanding. Obviously, more to report there, but something else to be tossed in as you talk about, like, why this, well, not even why, I shouldn't go that far, that's too far, but this project being canceled, the... I would say lackluster reception to call them out, even though it's like, oh yeah, it's the best PlayStation VR 2 game, but it wasn't the system seller must have, get out of the gate and go do mm-hmm. this kind of thing. I mean, even if it was, <laughs> like, would that change this? Like, even if, if even if uh, Horizon Call of the Mountain was a five out of five uh, kind of funny game as opposed to a three to five one, yeah. it, like it got like nine out of tens and all that shit, would that have been enough to have saved uh, 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 Fire Sprite from like, layoffs and like you know i mean apparently no because and i think and um, apparently no for what we're talking about here right we're yeah. this episode of ps i love you xoxo is of course lovingly called how does playstation recover right and i think to understand what they recover from and how they recover you need to do a little timeline research right mm-hmm. which i was happy to do for you blessing all I right appreciate it because we talk about this but we haven't talked about it with dates in a while january 31st 2022 sony buys bungie all right Days later, February 2nd, 2022, over at Polygon, Michael McWhorter uh, reports Sony with Bungie's help to launch more than 10 live service games by 2026. This was the first time this got announced. Jim Ryan, the CEO, uh, uh, people are talking about this, and we're like, this sounds like a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Live service is harder than you think it is. I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't push that way, yada, 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 right? I then jump more than a year later, uh, to May 24th, 2023. This, of course, is this PlayStation State of Play that features Helldivers 2, right? Yeah. What we kind of knew about, you knew Helldivers would eventually be coming, blah, blah, blah. But more importantly, introduces uh, three live service games, right? Fair Games, described by Haven Studios, a now-owned Sony studio. Our first new IP, Fair Games, is a fresh modern take on the heist genre. Then it was Concord, a new PvP multiplayer first-person shooter from Firewalk Studios coming to PlayStation 5 and PC. And then it was Marathon from Bungie, a sci-fi PvP extraction shooter. This launches a million episodes of this podcast, Games Daily, and us just being like, yeah, I was excited for Helldivers because I love Helldivers, but these all seem... What? Like, these are all mm-hmm. too similar and not enough unknown about them to care about them, right? And it seems like that's the reaction from the audience as well. Because remember, I think I just called this a PlayStation Showcase. It was actually the PlayStation... No, that's right. Oh, yeah, it, it was a showcase. showcase. I was yeah. fucking up, right? It wasn't a state of play. It was their big deal. And everybody's like, well, what about the first parties? And the, People are going know, in thinking like, okay, cool. Ghost Shima 2. Ghost, yeah, like, what what are dunk. the big games they're going to announce? What's Bluepoint up to? Metal Gear Solid Remake, all this, which I think we actually did get Metal Gear Solid 3 Remake. But still, where are all these big games? And then you get there and it's these games. From there, I'll bring you to November 9th, 2023. Andy Robinson at VGC reports, Sony Interactive Entertainment has halved the number of live service games it plans to release over the next few years, it's confirmed. SIE had previously said it planned to have 12 live service games in the market by its fiscal year ending March 2026, up from three during its last during its last business year ended this March. Of course, they said, no, 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 now it's just going to be six. We're focusing, we're doing yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. I then take you to December 14th, 2023. Naughty Dog puts up a statement saying they're out of the Last of Us multiplayer project. We realize that many of you have been anticipating news around the project that we've been calling The Last of Us Online. There's no easy way to say this. We've made the incredibly difficult decision to stop development on that game. In ramping up to full production, the massive scope of our ambition became clear. To release and support The Last of Us Online, we'd have to put all our studio resources behind supporting post-launch content for years to come, severely impacting development on future single-player games. So, we had two paths in front of us. Become a solely live-service game studio or continue to focus on single-player narrative games that have defined Naughty Dog's heritage. We know what they did there, what path they picked. And then I jump all the way to VGC, Chris Scullion, uh, February 19th, 2024. A new report calculates that Sony's value dropped around $10 billion last week following its revised PS5 sales forecast. You can toss in there, feel free, read between the lines. Maybe it's just whatever. Jim Ryan also saying, hey, you know what? I'm leaving the throne. I'm, 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 I'm no longer a lead PlayStation, right? You imagine he was a part of this push. I wonder for how long they've known this push was bad and they had to get out of it. Mm -hmm. And here we are, uh, you know, spurred on, I'm sure, by the giant loss of $10 billion in value, right? Mm -hmm. But also then just a, what you have to imagine is a major course correction for PlayStation. 
Am I wrong? Do you think that's what happened here? Is that they look behind the scenes and they're like, shit. I I mean, I think that's a part of it, right? I think, I mean, I think it, this is part of a few things. I think there's the larger industry conversation and the, the larger industry shifts as, as far as all of what we've been seeing in the last uh, last year, especially, but I guess in the last couple of years of layoffs and what we have today as of the time of recording, right? But earlier this week, as of the time you were listening, of like EA laying off 5% sure. of its workforce sure. and like Embracer and all those other things that are happening, right? I think a lot of that is indicative of uh, how much money is available to be able to fund these big projects and like the amount of confidence that people have in terms of the amount of mo money they can make in video games yeah. right now. And that alone, like that idea alone can be taken in multiple places because we were talking about, I was talking with Tim about this earlier about, you know, video games year on year are seeing growth, right? Like I think yeah. this year there was like a 4% growth in like video game revenue. But when you're talking about how people are spending that money within video games, I think that's where things start to see, uh, start, start to not seem grim, but just seem different. And a lot of people are adjusting for those differences. And so like for the console thing, right? Like I think uh, it was uh, Jeff Grubb and Matt Piscatella that were talking about on Twitter that uh, you see a shift in like people eight people like in younger ages spending less money on consoles it, was, it went from like 15 percent to seven percent year on year uh and like <clears throat> that money being shifted more towards seemingly i guess like more life service slash like you know software in different ways slash the game the money is just being spent differently gotcha. and i think that falls back on this big shift of playstation wanting to get into live service and last year uh you know, one of the big numbers that I, I throw out there that I, that I think has been fascinating has been like the 40-60 the split that they're uh, uh, trying to put on how much they want to fund single player, like their traditional PlayStation Studios games that we've gotten yeah. versus live service PlayStation games, right? I wanted to put 60% into that live service and then 40% uh, into more single player stuff as opposed to like the 70% slash I think even 90% that we saw by the beginning of 2020 or so. I think making that bet, making that shift going, hey, let's are all into this or let's put our most into this you know fast forward to now where we're seeing a big shift out of life service we're seeing a lot of the life service games that come out not necessarily hit and even the ones that are hitting right like held Divers 2 coming out and being being a success like literally just now i was on playstation lifestyle and there's a different article i wonder if i can find it real quick titled oh i lost it but it was essentially talking about how held Divers 2 this week is like seeing double uh, uh it's 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 sales right like held Divers 2 is killing it but is it killing it enough for them to, to to get the success that PlayStation wants out of the entire life service push that they're that they're looking for, right? Like even if they put out Fair Games, Marathon, Concord, and those are all seeing Helldivers 2 success, is that still what PlayStation wants in terms of the amount of money that they need to, you know, funnel back into the rest of the PlayStation ecosystem when we're talking about a dip in console sales, when we're talking about how much money it takes to fund a Spider-Man, God of War, Horizon, etc. Like, I think you know, the live service push is a big part of where we're seeing things fall apart a little bit in strategy, but also at the same time, I don't know even what the right move is. Like, we, we like to play armchair CEO a lot because it's fun and... and um, we like got it, no skin in the game. We got no skin in the we game. Can just talk, we can just talk, talk, talk and go back to playing games. It's also fascinating to talk about. And we're also people that play video, video games a lot. And I think we have, uh, I think we have good perspectives. Uh, I agree. Yeah. But that said, like, if PlayStation, if like a PlayStation CEO came to me or if a, somebody at PlayStation came, came to me and they're like, what the fuck do we need to do? I'll look at them and be like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I really don't know like what the move is. I obviously great games is usually the answer. That's the right? answer. But, That's the answer. Yeah. In so many different ways. I think to, I again, don't know anything, but when I don't even, as I went through and I was talking about, you know, May 24th, we do this introduction of these live service games I don't. I include Helldivers because it was part of that presentation. Yes, it was an online. It's an online game. I'm sure it got looped in, but I also don't think it's the same thing of what this is, right? Mm -hmm. Like, Helldivers is an online game. Yes, it has a store, but it's also a store that is like not egregious. It doesn't update nearly as much as I want it to. It. I can get the currency. I put ten bucks in on day one, and I still have more than ten dollars in my wallet because of getting money off the battle pass the way I have and stuff like that. So it's like it is this, but I think it falls more into my category of just make great games. I think what PlayStation, 
I don't want to say has lost because that is insulting to all the work they've done and all the games they've made and all the you know the right moves they've made. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, like Rise of the Ronin is going to be one of those next month and yada yada yada. I mean, even the partnership with Final Fantasy Rebirth right now, right, where that's a console exclusive right now, like. That's a great. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. These are the deals you need to be making, right? Mm -hmm. But to go back to it, it's just like live service it can't be where you start the conversation. It can't be that we want live service games. It should be you want to make great games. What are your ideas for great games? You know, you put up the uh, Sonic meme, or no, no, yeah, yeah, well, Sonic, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, but the meme uh, you've seen, even if it's not through the Sonic lens, of you know. You want worse games with worse graphics made uh, quicker, where people don't kill themselves. Yeah, I want I want shorter games with worse graphics made by people who are paid more to work less. And I'm not kidding. Yeah, and I mean that's the real part of this, right? Like I think where PlayStation's PlayStation Five strategy is failing, and I won't even say failing, I guess, but struggling right now, is the fact that everyone wants their first parties and first party games to be God of War and to be Horizon, and to be The Last of Us, and to be these gigantic, multi -mil hundreds of millions of dollars, Spider-Man 2, th hundreds of people. Were, but And it's like, that is great, but that is something they've ballooned to. Yeah. And I don't think PlayStation's doing the right thing anymore of filling in the gaps on their own. There should be three Helldivers stories, and, and, uh, three games like Helldivers a year at least. Right, you should be, and I mean, in a year right now where we're talking about there won't be a big AAA PlayStation Five game until from PlayStation until April of next year at yeah, the earliest. Yeah, yeah. Right, there needs to be even more than three. But that's what I'm talking about. Of like, this is where a smaller studio like uh, um, uh, the people who did Concrete Genie, it's a, it's a escaping me right now. Oh, um, right down south, or not anymore. Uh, Pixel Opus. Yeah, it's where Pixel Opus filled a great gap of, hey, we're making this small artsy game, we can do it. It's where uh, Astrobot fills an interesting gap of, hey, here's something that can be great and be. A it's where Hell Divers is. It's where Returnal is. It's like, what are these games that can be a PlayStation Double A? Mm -hmm. It's still a Triple A in terms of being on PlayStation, being exclusive, having the blah, blah, blah. but be like, yep, we made we made Returnal. It's this. Yep, we made Hell Divers. It's this. Like. Helldivers works because Arrowhead is so unflinching in their vision of what that game should be. And they sat down and they made it and they charged 40 bucks for it, right? Like at PlayStation got it twisted, I feel. And I still think the strongest in all of my career covering PlayStation, right? Which spans the, the end of the PlayStation 2 life cycle till now with PlayStation 5. The strongest messaging they've ever had that they just fucking crushed and knocked out of the part was the launch of the PlayStation 4. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is a game machine. Fuck being the media center and all that crap. Yeah, you can watch Netflix on it. It's about games. We're talking about games. Here are all these indies you'll be able to play on it. Here's how you share games on it. Here's all, like, it is just about you, the gamer. We are making a game machine. Game, 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 game. And PlayStation is now in a spot where I feel like their message has been, hey, we are making the top tier industry defining games. But underneath that, there's not much in terms of like yeah. what you're getting. We're getting rid of Japan Studio. We're closing up this. We're doing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we're erasing those gone. things, right? I've said it before, and I think if you thought I was wrong, Barry, give me my one. Fuck you. Am I not clearly right that PlayStation VR 2 is a product from a different PlayStation? Like this is something that's been was gestating for so long mm -hmm. that when it finally got out the gate, it was like, holy shit. Very similar to this live service push. Holy shit the industry has shifted and VR has not caught the momentum we thought it would. This was a bad move. Whether you like PlayStation VR 2 or not, I love the tech. I think it feels really good. Yada, yada, yada. It's not what PlayStation needs right now. Yeah. They needed to be, you know, what we should do? All that money we were going to do for that, go and put it into these different studios. The studios that we've closed or whatever. Have somebody making a an arcade motor storm. I, and I'm just spitballing things, but like you have all these different IPs and franchises, let alone new ideas. Go do all of that. Be like, you know, you talk uh, the one of the Herman quotes in here is interesting, right? Of talking about uh, creativity, right? Uh, da, 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 Our philosophy has always been uh, to allow creative experimentation. I feel like, and again, this is armchair quarterback. This is us outside of the boardroom. This is us not being in any first party studio or PlayStation conference uh, call. But it's this idea that like 
saying you want all these live service games and Bungie's going to educate that and da 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 just seems the inverse way to do this. Creative experimentation is what Pixel Opus was doing. It's what Media Molecule did with Dreams, another great example of a different PlayStation, right? Mm -hmm. And those games, yes, are going to strike out. And if they've overscoped and they've grown too big to do it, then yeah, you're going to lose people that that way, and that sucks. But I feel like when you see that happen, when you see a studio take a big swing and then face these repercussions, as much as it still sucks, as much as it's still unfair, as much as it still is, how much fucking CEO bonus do you really need? Make sure these people have a jobs. At least you can sit there and go, oh, they died doing something they wanted. When it's these things where it's like, can we make a live service yeah, game? Can we can we get a battle pass in here? It's like I doubt any of those people were stoked that that was like the thing. They might have gotten excited behind it. Maybe they did want to make an online game. Yada yada yada. But it's like, come the fuck on. Like PlayStation should be about the fucking games. Mm -hmm. But my only thing with that is that you know I think in the last generation of PlayStation, it has felt like they have been about the games, right? Like it has felt like it is. Oh snap, we're getting a good handful of exclusive or first party games coming out of PlayStation that have been hitting right especially when we talk about like you know the single player big budget stuff of and course. even on the lower on the non as big budget end right you have things like Astro uh, uh, Astro's Playroom or Astro Rescue Mission you have things like Concrete Genie what's up see i'm i'm with you on the top half yeah. they're still doing that with the AAA stuff i think they've eroded doing the smaller thing mm -hmm. where it's like to talk about Astro about well sure but that was at the launch of the PlayStation 5 right which was now 4 years ago almost yeah. you know what i mean and talk about concrete genie right it's even longer than that right that was a PlayStation that was PS4 game. like mid PS4 yeah, yeah. yeah it's like but you, you, but and, and so you can even go back to like PS3 when it was like we had an exclusive every month and it was a bunch of weird shit but it was whatever you know what i mean i'm fucking getting last but I, I guess my thing with that is like were those games successful right were they doing for yep. playstation what playstation needed those games to do for them and like if we do that going forward right like what is i you know i think a big shift in this live service thing right is them looking at the money and looking at all right this is and this is literally what the slideshow they put out last year looked like right hey we these are the numbers from the uh, uh how much money the industry is making from ongoing content this is how much money we can make from ongoing content. This is how much money we want to invest in yeah. ongoing content, right? Like, I think I, I, I think for PlayStation, right? Like, if I'm, I'm a, if I'm a gambling CEO and I'm like, all right, like I want this company to make more money. I want to do this, right? I think you do look at the things like Concrete Genie or Dreams or I don't know, like list out anything that is like on the uh, uh, like double A end, right, yeah. of, of it, and you go. These are all going to make less money than if we have one good life service game. Yeah, see, and this is such a great conversation because I'm with you, but I still think that it would be the wrong message. If you can say that, and mm -hmm. I'd be in the boardroom with you and like let you finish, maybe not cut you off like I just did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would be like, yes, but the odds are so against us that we're going to make the next great live service game. Because mm -hmm. again, when we, yeah, I agree with that. when we talk about the live service games that we have loved that have failed, right? We're talking about a Knockout City. We're talking about a Rumbleverse. We're, you know what I mean? Like these are games we actually enjoyed and participated in, 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 stuck around with. Avengers, right, for me, which was a fine game. But you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I would, say, I would be in there arguing with my whole fucking chest. That like, yeah, we don't need to go back to PS3 where there was a weird exclusive a month and all these little PSN games that blah, blah, blah. But like, we should be looking for Helldivers. We should be looking for, here are second parties to bolster our first uh, our PlayStation Studios yeah. while they work. They can be exclusive to us. They can be these. But is that not what we're doing right now? With, uh, with Helldivers 2 and Horizon of the Ronin and with uh, uh, Stellar Blade, I guess. Yeah, like. I don't think there's enough. And yeah. I think that, I think what we're going to see here is a drought where, the money that was going to go to this live service push, the money that was going into PR stuff or P PSVR stuff, and now the chilling effect of these layoffs, and I'm sure the suspended on all sorts of partnerships, are going to lead to e even more desert light atmosphere here in terms of what oh, we're getting. Sure. And so it's that thing of, I think if you wouldn't have gone and said, man, all these games would do just fine, but not great. But if we could get one golden ring, if we could get one live service game, which I'm sure they thought was Last of Us, mm -hmm. if we could get one live service game to hit, it wouldn't matter. And I think they gambled. They gambled on the vision that they'd be able to do that, which is now eroded and left barren, I would say, probably what when we're through these games these partnerships probably dry up this is the thing coming out of dice too that i've been vocal about and talking about of, and i know danny Pena has been as well of like the messaging being from people you're talking to there is like man 
it's going to be a brutal oh, winter yeah. here. Like People are not funding games the way they were. They're being guarded with their money. And I think that now you have that doubling to this effect with PlayStation on top of that. And so it's this idea of like, imagine if they hadn't done this idea of, well, we need to experiment with VR and we need to chase this live service trend. Mm -hmm. If they had just said, fuck that, let's keep working with really great games. Again, the model that no shareholder, no fucking stock person wants to hear of slow and steady. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Let's just do what we do great and make moderate returns. Everybody was like, no, let's go out and we have to have year over year growth. We have to have these double digit percentage growth spurts. And now you're fucked because you don't have that. And I do not think you have the capital, let alone balls in this market to then go and double down and get those kind of games and go to whatever indie, what, and not even indie like, Dave the Diver, not even indie, yeah. like a small studio that's one person, like just independent developers to make those deals in a way that is, oh, this is a great deal for us and we need to do that. Yeah. One thing that um, I was talking to Tim about earlier that, you know, I've been thinking about a little, quite a bit over the last few days, especially with the layoff stories and all this stuff, right? But then also this is coming off the Insomniac leaks where, you know, there was info about the uh, budgets that were being used yeah. to make a lot of these big PlayStation first party games and how like, the money, like in terms of the gross of like um, uh, revenue that you're making off these games, right? Like, there's a lot of money being spent on these things, and you, these games aren't making as much as you would expect on the overall level, right? Like, um, one of the things that I I wonder about, and I'm fascinated to see in the next five years for PlayStation is, do we ever see, do we ever see games, uh, uh, PlayStation games, continue the um, level of budget quality polish that we've seen out of the uh, god of war 2018's uh, uh ragnarok's horizons that that type of game like that what we associate with the premium playstation first party uh, title yeah mainly off the idea of money tightening up like what you're talking about in terms of not not as much money to go around or to make these things also the budget that it's taking to make these games and the amount of money that you might not be making <laughs> uh, making these games and then also with the idea of man, this PlayStation Live service thing doesn't seem to be paying off on the level that maybe they wanted to pay it off with, right? Like, especially if you are leaning on something like a Last of Us Online, if that's not funding PlayStation games for you, like first-party PlayStation stuff for you, what is that going to look like in terms of after, let's say, after Ghost 2, after whatever the next Ben game is, or whatever, like, the next slate of games that are already, like, being worked on that are about to come out in the next three years. When we get past that, do we see a complete shift in terms of, all right, this era of PlayStation is done. We are doing what you're talking about in terms of, and then I guess you're talking about like a lot more partnerships, right? But like, I guess in this case, I'm thinking even first party, hey, let's take it down a notch. Like we do not have the money to make a God of War Ragnarok anymore. We don't have the money to make a Last of Us Part 2 anymore. We have the money to make maybe a 10 hour version of that. But see, I think in uh, I, a whole shift, I don't see that. I can see a partial one for sure. And I think that you could easily see the messaging being if you're not making God of War, if you're not making The Last of Us, if you're not making Spider-Man slash Wolverine, mm -hmm. those days are done for a while for you guys. What is your smaller game? What is your shorter game? What is something we can get from you faster, right? Like, I think in the grand scheme of things, the one I always go back to getting a raw deal and I could see getting a raw deal again is Sony bend mm -hmm. where Sony bend, you know, it's funny we're coming off of resistance retribution, right? Sony bend did the PSP siphon filter games. And I'm talking more of a modern look, obviously they have a, they did siphon filter and yet, yeah, but, but, but like the, they did the PSP games. Then they did the uncharted Vita game, right? Then it was like, fine. And we've seen so many different reports from what happened and didn't have a, then they finally get to days gone which seemed like it was going to be their moment, right? Their ghost of Sushim at the very least, maybe their uh, horizon, right? They get there. It's poorly received by critics. The There's an audience that loves it, but yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. And then there's so much turmoil, turnover, people leaving, da, 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 da. Well, there's the report that they were told to go work on this. They did for a bit, and then they're like, we don't want to work on that anymore. Can we go do that? And so, like, supposedly they're work. I think they actually, this is public from them, right? They're working on a new IP or whatever, right? Yeah. They are, I would say, like the perfect example here of like, they would be a studio. I would be like, don't make another giant AAA game. Not because you're not talented, not because you're yeah. not great. Just I need games quicker and I need games smaller. 
So what double A ish game can you do that are you're going to be able to turn yeah. out and have less of a risk in terms of the investment with this would put in on it? But are you going to see the success? Like, well, with these games I'm not looking for the gigantic success because I'm saying I don't know if I think I'm talking even moderate success though. Like, not that like Sony Ben can make a good game. I believe yeah. that any studio can make a good game as long as like they treat it right and do it well. But is I, this comes back to my concern slash I guess wondering about what the shift is for PlayStation. Because I think to some extent, when we talk about what the market has been and what the market seems like it's, it might be barreling towards, PlayStation has set the standard for what big budget polished premium uh, first party, or not first party, but like single player action games yeah. look like, right? On that level, on the cinematic level. I, if PlayStation did that, if PlayStation stops delivering that, I think you have a response from the audience that's like, okay, well, no, like, like, wh well, my, where is this? I, but I think the audience is looking for Spider-Man, God of War, her ride. And, I th yeah. and that's what I'm saying is I think those go on and continue and happen. And you do probably like the E3 from whatever, where we had like three E3s in a row where we saw the same four major PlayStation games, right? Mm -hmm. Where it was Ghost, it was Last of Us, it was uh, the Days Gone, it was, you know what I mean? Detroit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you show those, you're sh hey, we're making progress and we're doing it and here's your cinematic trailer, but you're using the other ones to give you Hell Divers, hopefully. Yeah. You're using them to give it them, hey, here is a game that took two years to make that we really believe in and we really like and we're selling yeah. for 30 bucks. You know what I mean? And like, what is the success there? Like, the success is so convoluted because you're talking about, well, I want them to obviously sell and make a lot of money off the game, but then, of course, stay, stay on play. Uh, selling the console is pretty huge. Well, then what about PlayStation Plus? And then what about, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's so many different ways to get it that I don't think VR and I don't think live service are the answers for. Yeah, I just wonder if that, if that same audience that it once God of War, once Horizon, once Last of Us is going to see Ben Studio, new IP that is double A level or it is like random nine hour I game never, and go. I never said new IP. <laughs> oh, oh, oh you, so you think like they go back and like work on something that's art? I mean, again, like because now we're getting to such an interesting conversation uh, of like you're talking about like getting all the people who played Spider Man to come. To, you're never going to do that, right? Yeah. Like there, are, there's people who are just going to play their PlayStation for Spider Man, and then maybe Last of Us and whatever sports game. You know, you know, they're picking up three or four games a year. It is more about keeping the gamer entertained i think keeping them believing in the platform the people who would go to a psx yada yada, yada. and then all, more importantly keeping your at least for me not clearly not for a lot of people more importantly keeping your employees employed where you have all these people spread across all these studios and if they're all working on projects that it takes six years we're fucked you know what i mean like we need somebody making something that is bringing in a reason to buy a playstation a reason to buy this game or you know what i mean mm -hmm. a reason to be participating in the platform because even to just Having a game to turn on your thing to then turn on the PlayStation Store so that next time your friends want to play something and you want to, it's going to be a multi. You say, well, why don't we just buy Call of Duty on PlayStation? Why don't we just buy whatever on PlayStation? Mm -hmm. Like, there's that whole thing which is way harder to track and figure out. Yeah, I'm not thinking any of the studios I pull off, or, and, and I even pull off, right? But like any of the studios, I'm like, you need to be making something in two to three years. That's whatever a Jack and Daxter, but your interpretation of it, or what you know, blah blah blah, a getaway, but your interpretation of it, and it doesn't all need to be old stuff feel free to do new things but it's like i'm not expecting those to be breakout hell divers success i'm thinking it's hell divers quality i'm trying to if where does how does playstation fix this i think they fix it by reaffirming we are playstation and we are great games which isn't the sexiest headline and tagline but fuck did it work with the playstation 4 and as we've drifted away from that and again how much of PlayStation success in video games as a whole right now have been driven by a hopefully knock on wood once in a lifetime pandemic that you know spikes numbers and made it seem like the good times are going to roll forever and blah blah you know what I mean like there's so many moving parts to all of this yeah. that I think gamers will never leave video games so you need to be making games for them and when we went when you go to mainstream and you try to do all this different stuff I feel like that's when you lose your message you lose your identity and you make it so hard to get back to it yeah I think my one thing to still with it, because I'm with you, I'm with you on everything, right? I'm with you on like, right, I, if, if, I'm ride or die, right? If I'm, with, I, I'm with you on the, even the fact of I would love to see that vision for PlayStation. That is, hey, 
let's have a let's have a varied library of exclusive games like let's let's not just make the god of wars and horizons but let's explore the scale let's have more games like hell divers 2 let's have more games like i know sifu wasn't first party but i think it came out console exclusive when it first launched so i'll say like let's have games like c4 stray right like what if we explored what a playstation playstation game can be and like yeah had things like i'm so curious to see how rise of the ronin does um let's do I hope that. that game's good man i hope it's good too i, like, I have confidence in it at least i have confidence for me because i like team ninja or, uh, i have confidence in me yeah <laughs> I, I have i like i liked uh their whole long fallen dynasty so i think i'll like rise of the Ronin. but you know i love that idea of a vision i i guess my question then is like what is the problem we're fixing here because i still think that even if playstation was on that path and like had carved that out as opposed to like live service and even like didn't launch psvr2 i think I, I would venture to imagine that we would still be in this place where we're getting these layoffs right like i think these layoffs are just part of what we're, where we're at in the industry like i think that is like part of a, of, of a larger problem and a larger larger conversation um and even still right like i i i'm still holding out some hope for concord fair games and marathon i like, stand by you'll never play fair games in a, i mean in out a full, of all in a full out of release three? format maybe it's some preview oh you think like it'll never come out i don't think it'll come out Oh, interesting. I think I think they have the sword of Damocles above their head. Do mm -hmm. I know anything? Of course not. Do I like Haven Studios? I don't know anything about them, but Jade Raymond's always been cool. This isn't me saying they suck. Yeah. I don't want that clear. I just think it sounds like the most generic game, and I can't imagine that being... like Again, mm -hmm. I'm going off of one cinematic trailer, you know what I mean? Yeah, and one yeah, blog yeah. post. So I, I hope I'm wrong, yada, yada, yada. It's just like... Yeah, my hope definitely isn't like, man, these games are, are all three going to come out and they're going to hit, right? But like my my hope is more so... I could see Marathon being like a held ever two situation. Not bigger because it's Bungie, right? But like I could see that coming out and, and and doing that. I could see Concord, just based on what we know about it, coming out and like doing something, right? Like being again, being like a held ever two thing. This comes back to the conversation we we're having last week of if you can have the same PlayStation that could foster a held ever two, which I know Arrowhead Studios, third party studio, but even still, right? Like I think having a publisher that is PlayStation and having yeah. like that um you know level of hey if we fall like <laughs> playstation can catch us to some extent here um and having that vision that we're able to stick to and not have it be an over monetized live or live service thing i think that comes back to the, the thing that we're talking about overall in terms of what we want to see out of playstation like you know great games come in all packages and all that held Divers 2 doing what it's doing being a quote-unquote live service but not necessarily what we think about in terms of like a Fortnite type situation yeah, yeah. yeah like i love that like this is so far with Hell Divers 2, if we're counting Hell Divers 2 in the um We like, have to. I'm sure they did. Slate, I'm sure they did. So far we're one for one out of what I would want out of a PlayStation Live service. Like with Last of Us Online, I wouldn't want Last of Us Online to be Fortnite or be like something that is like on that top level where it is uh not top level is the wrong pl place to put it, but I guess like overly live service, like, oh man, we're checking in every week for whatever bullshit and uh, uh like I'm paying ten dollars for ellie to wear pants that look like jack and daxter or some shit you know like <laughs> i don't want that i want what helldivers 2 is doing and yeah. i i would hope that concord and the, the other ones are doing something that is sort of like that marathon i expect marathon to be do, do to do bungee shit right and i'm curious to see what that is but if we're gonna have that, that bungee shit these days yeah what, uh, that is a fair point if we're gonna have that and then also have astrobots of the world and also have yeah yeah uh, media molecule makes something that embodies media molecule like i think all these thing all these parts working together can make a vibrant playstation especially for the audience or for the lot uh, what the catalog of games is there i think that's fucking exciting i think that's dope i still think it's i, th I still think if playstation has all of that the financials are still going to be like ah but it's not enough i uh, yes I mean, that's you asked that question, you know what I mean? Of like, if they had done what I'm pitching before live service, before VR, they didn't do those and they did this. Mm -hmm. I'm all, you're also going back and projecting off of me being the CEO president, right? And mm -hmm. I am not staffing up, acquiring and over scoping the way it seems like it's gone. You know what I mean? I would not have been like, you're right. We're going to make money forever. These things, yeah. you know, their PlayStation 5s are going to fucking move forever and ever. And I mean, I, I just wouldn't have done the decisions that have led to this, right? Mm -hmm. Which was getting too big on this uh, front. And I think that I personally would have traded in, in any economic thing, right? I would trade the slow and steady growth. Uh, I would go that way every time over the chance of an explosive yeah. growth or maintaining this explosive growth or going that way. I'm so, I'm, I'm excited for whenever eventually a full Astrobot game comes out to see how the audience uh, uh, uh receives it because i think it. obviously i i have full hope 
or and like I'll put money down. I think any of us would that the next Astrobot game is going to be fucking immaculate. It's going to be fucking fun because the last be. two it better be have been immaculate, right? I'm also going back to Concord, Fair Games, and all this shit, right? I'm curious on how the audience continues to receive this because Helldivers Two, I think, is such a surprise for me and i think it's a surprise for all of us just in like i don't think any of us expected hell as a hell divers fan i didn't expect it to, to be this good to do this and this comes back to me being like i think playstation has set themselves up with horizon ghost god of war all this shit these games that fucking came through and had premium budgets bigger than like you know what we see out of so many other third-party publishers i don't think the audience is set up to like flock to games like hell divers 2 but hell divers 2 is an example of something that i think was kind of like a um uh i forget the phrase but i guess like a unicorn right it came through and it did the damn thing can you replicate that like yeah i think that'll be telling when we get there when we start getting more games that aren't what we're used to right like i, I i'm very fascinated to see you, so you're saying like you know when we get more games that aren't the big triple a yeah. we're used to yeah huh. yeah that plays into a little story we have to talk about down in this week in playstation but before then I'll remind you that this is the PS I Love You XOXO podcast. Uh, of course, you should be getting it with a kind of funny membership. With a kind of funny membership on Patreon or YouTube, you could watch us record the show live, uh, just like Lanky Dragoon is, who cracked me up when he went, when you were talking about uh, Last of Us Online, when it be Fortnite, and he goes, Ariana Grande concert in the QZ on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, watch us live, get us ad free, uh, get all those benefits for the other podcasts, and get the daily Greg Way vlog. But guess what? You're not using your membership, so here's a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Shady Rays, an independent sunglasses brand that has over 300,000 five-star reviews. They are on a mission to match affordability with durability, making top quality shades accessible to everyone. They have tons of styles and colors to pick from, so finding the perfect polarized shades is a breeze. If you want an upgrade, we recommend their premium Color Rush lenses. Crafted with rare earth materials, these lenses bring high impact color to life, elevating reds, blues, and greens. Here at Kinda Funny, we all love wearing our Shady Rays, whether it's me looking dope doing my Pokemon Go walks, Snowbike Mike rocking the snow goggles, or Joey just looking fantastic in her tangle-free shades. If your shades go MIA or take a hit, don't sweat it. They've got lost and broken protection, so you're covered from day one. And if you don't love your shades, exchange or return them for free within 30 days. Exclusively for y'all, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Head to ShadyRays.com and use code KF20 for $20 off each pair of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 300,000 people. Again, that's ShadyRays.com and use code KF20 for $20 off each pair of polarized sunglasses. This episode's brought to you by Avatar Braving the Elements. We know you love talking about all things TV, film, and pop culture with us, so there's another podcast that we think you're going to enjoy. It's called Avatar Braving the Elements, and it's Nickelodeon's official companion podcast to Avatar The Last Airbender. Y'all already know Barrett loves Avatar. He thinks it's one of the best coming-of-age hero's journeys out there that perfectly blends enticing action, great comedy, and social commentary that's all backed by great art style and an iconic soundtrack. Each week, host Janet Varney, the voice of Korra, and Dante Bosco, the voice of Zuko, rewatch every episode of The Last Airbender. They're joined by special guests like the cast, super fans, and even the creators of Avatar, Michael DiMartino and Brian Konitzko, for a deep dive and behind-the-scenes look into the Avatar verse you can't get anywhere else. Whether you're a longtime vendor or new to the series, jump into the epic world of Avatar with Avatar Braving the Elements. Listen to Avatar Braving the Elements on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Y'all need to check out Kinda Funny Game Showdown, our weekly video game trivia game show. You can watch live on YouTube or on Twitch every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. But now, thanks to popular demand, Kinda Funny Game Showdown is available on podcast services. Whether you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or anywhere else, please subscribe and rate the show five stars. It really helps us get Kinda Funny out there. And we couldn't thank you enough. We aim to make this a video only show. So many of the games we best enjoyed watching on YouTube, but despite that enough of you guys asked for audio versions so we're making that happen anyways of course that also means if you have the kind of funny membership on patreon you will now also get the audio version of the show ad free no matter how you're watching or listening to kind of funny game showdown 
thank you. And if you haven't checked it out yet, there is no better time than now. We're already many episodes into the show, so you can catch up now on YouTube or the brand new podcast version of the show. If you love what we do, please get the Kind of Funny membership on Patreon or on YouTube to get the show ad-free. If you just want to support us for free, please subscribe and rate Kind of Funny Game Showdown on your favorite podcast service now. Plus, what's happened this week in PlayStation? This week in PlayStation. I will say, we were earlier in the conversation. We were talking on, like, um, um, what's the show? That we ha- kind of funny happy hour. Uh, yeah. Me and Andy were talking about, like, comments we get and all this stuff, right? And you mentioned that there was a, a comment that's like, oh, man, bl- you ever noticed how when Blessing talks about PlayStation, he says we? And there was a point earlier in this conversation that I said we, but I was referring to us as CEOs of PlayStation. Sure, Not sure, that I'm sure, part sure. of PlayStation, yeah, but I said it and I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> they got me. God damn. They got me. <laughs> um, we got one story here. Uh, the Last of Us creator might not have many big games left in him, referring Ooh. to Neil Druckmann. This is Daniel D'Angelo at PlayStation Lifestyle. Neil Druckmann says he might not have many AAA games left in him. The Last of Us director recently gave an interview with the rapper Logic on the, on the latter's Logically Speaking podcast. The interview was... <laughs> Man, <laughs> it's so hard to say with a straight face. Daniel knew what he was fucking doing there with that yeah. alliteration. Uh, the interview was over an hour and 20 minutes long, and they talked extensively about Druckmann's career, including his future. Quote, I guess that I don't see myself doing this forever at this scale. It's just a lot, and it takes a lot out of you. It's very stressful to manage that many uh, that many people and multiple studios worldwide. Yeah, so the Naughty Dog executive continued, quote, I'm just at a point in my life where it's like you start looking at... What's the end game here? When is it time to call it? So I could see myself transitioning to something that's more low key and lower stressed. That still allows me to have this creative outlet. But, you know, I've started thinking about how many more of these games do I have in me? And it's not that many. End quote. Greg? Yeah. I mean, there's multiple places I, I, I can take this conversation. Take me on a trip, brother. And I'm trying to figure out which one I want to take you. I guess I'll, 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 I'll take it this. What do you want to see out of Neil Druckmann? I mean, as the CEO of PlayStation, yeah, uh, <laughs> make as, more uh, last of us is, make five more of them. No, I, well, I mean, like I meant as uh, you know, the coming off of Tots is that CEO, not the real. Oh, CEO. Oh, okay, you're yeah. the good CEO. Yeah, I mean, whatever he wants to make, you know what I mean? Like he's he he is a Hideo Kojima. I feel of like, all right, what are you excited about, and what do you want to go make? All right, then go make that game with whatever team size you need to go make that game, right? Mm-hmm. But I do understand. I mean, like first off, did you watch Grounded Two yet? No, not yet. Yeah, me neither. I don't know. It's been on yeah. my queue or whatever. But like, we all live through the Last of Us Part Two, and we've ha- I've done the spoiler cast with Neil, let alone the conversations I've had privately with Neil. Like, right, the fact that that man is still making video games, period, after mm-hmm. the Last of Us Part Two and everything they went through, I think is a testament to the strength of him, right? But I totally get the idea of like, this shit takes a lot. Let alone, then that's just like the reaction of millions of people, let alone the the actual business side of running it, managing it, you know, seeing something through. Um, I don't take this as bad news. Uh, I, again, I want Neil to make whatever he wants to make. And so if the idea is that he doesn't have many more AAA big games in him, okay, cool. Then let's say you got one more or don't even do that. Take more time off and make something smaller with Naughty Dog or go work on the shows. Do whatever you got to do. Like, Don't force it because I think if you were to, if he was, and this is anybody, but where it sounds like he is off of this interview, if you're going to go force a AAA game that you're not all in on, like think about the living nightmare it was for Last of Us Part Two, then to have that applied to a game that you don't even believe in, that you don't even want to do, that you get a year and 10 months into, you're like, fuck, I shouldn't have done this. I should have taken the break. I should have gone. I should have retired, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Go do that. You know, I, I pulled it up to make sure I had it right because I always forget the actual thing. But Bruce Straley, right, uh, co-creator of The Last of Us uh, Part 1, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he left Naughty Dog. He left uh, before Last of Us Part 2, kind of retired from games, right, and then popped his head up a few years later and started Wildflower Interactive, right, where they are working on a game over there. Uh, you know, Last of Us, of course, in Naughty Dog and the big cinematic and yada yada. Their trailer announcing Wildflower Interactive was very indie and very flowery and naturey and stuff like that. Like, it seems like a different scope of what to do there, right? But I think that speaks to what you see from so many video game developers and creators that are, you get burned out doing the big thing. You say you're done and you walk away and then you get a little bit of perspective. You get a little time off. You get your head back. You get your mind back. And you're like, you know what? I do want to keep doing this. This is what I do. Yeah. I think for me, I, uh, I'm with you that, you know, I want to see him do whatever he wants to do. I would like to see him like either make something smaller or make something different. Uh, I like, I, 
to your point of like you know going through last is part two and seeing what that release was uh, was like and also i think just having the last decade of naughty dog be just these couple of games right like if you go back to 2014 2014 i think was when we got like last was remastered and then uh uh the year after that or maybe two years after that was uncharted 4 and then it's last was 2 and that's kind of like been it as far as like new naughty dog games where you're not counting like remasters and re-releases and stuff that t- that's a lot of time like that's a chunk of your life and we only have so many <laughs> years on this earth not to get existential i mean that's the other thing neil talks about in this that didn't make this cut or this or this article right up but he was talking about his children right yeah like them aging and realizing you have less time with them so do you want to be fucking at yeah the office at 9 30 trying to figure out whatever problem you're dealing with and i i think for games that are taking forever uh, to make right like if it takes six years to make the next naughty dog game or seven years to make the next naughty dog game like if i'm neil i'm like i don't want to fucking do that <laughs> like, sure. i don't yeah, want to yeah. like i just put out two of these things and like you know i've now tasted the the fruit of putting out a tv show <laughs> which probably took it what like a couple years yeah like and i'm and i'm reaching a different audience and i'm doing all that i'm like attending the oscar or um what's the one for t emmys <laughs> like, like i'm doing this shit yeah and it's like I don't have to make a video game. Like I can find yeah. so many other creative outlets to like get that same level of gratification. I have this uh, level of notoriety and, and um, fame now, and I can use that to my advantage to like find these different creative pursuits. Like, cool. Yeah. I, I, w- I would want another video game out of, out of, out of Neil Druckmann, but also like, I don't know, man, I don't need another big video game out of Neil Druckmann. I'm sure he's working on one or two more, but if he did want to switch it up and yeah, make something that's more indie, I, I, as you, as you know, you were talking about this. One thing that came to mind was um, Joseph Ferris. And yeah. I really like Joseph Ferris's games because it is, it doesn't, it, he makes like, you know, independent slash double A, triple A games, but they don't feel last of a scope, right? They oh, are, no. yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It Takes Two, even though It Takes Two is a pretty big game. Too that was, big. Too, yeah, too, too big. long. Overstated its yeah, welcome, that, but yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah, it did overstate its welcome a bit, but that was a game that was filled with so much wonder and so much creativity, and like, that is like a, that's a Joseph Ferris-ass game. Like, yeah, you can feel 100%. like this had vision behind it and all yeah. this shit, and it didn't take seven years it didn't take forever right it, it takes two or not it takes two a way out a way out is another one and like these games have the identity brothers tale of two sons all have this identity that is hey I, this guy joseph ferris is, loves co-op like he just likes making co-op games and he's making his dream projects and they're not taking forever and all this shit i would love to see creatives with like this kind of vision make games that are a bit smaller and more contained like I don't need Neil Druckmann to make something that's going to be game of the year contender for everybody, right? Like, I would just be down to see Neil Druckmann just make a fucking video game. Yep. And if it happens to be a takes two and it's a game of the year contender, then so be it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that, I don't know. Like, I, I would love to see something like that. Out of, uh, out I think of, the know. main takeaway from it, right, is I just hope he doesn't burn himself out. And I know that that's what everybody says to everybody in every industry. It feels like these days, our side, their side, whatever. But it's that idea of, again, if you're vocalizing this, right, I don't see myself doing this forever at this say, say, scale. It's just a lot. It takes a lot out of you. Like, you're already wounded. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it also, I do think, probably has something to do with The Last of Us show, like you're saying, of like, oh, the grass is greener over here. You know what I mean? I got to do this with a creative uh, partner in Craig Mazin, let alone the cast, let alone the cinematography. You know what I mean? All these different things of like, collaborating creatively getting it done way quicker than a game feeling like it wasn't all on you you know having all these different pieces of a a a puzzle right as a creator like i'm sure it was quite different than a video game and i'm sure it was better in a lot of ways and you do wonder then of like okay cool like i just want him and everybody who makes games to be happy (laughs) like so if it's like if you're gonna get less joy out of the next game move and like neil Druckmann, i mentioned this before but i'll say again like he strikes me so much as a storyteller like obviously yeah. he's a game yeah. director and obviously like he's a, a game designer but i think he cares so much about story and like conveying story and like the cutscenes and the like, performances and all this stuff and easily i can see him being like yo let me why don't i just make a tv show like even more so than kojima who kojima obviously is in love with film kojima obviously like is in love with cinema yeah but kojima is also like he that man can design a fucking video game like he is in like all the details making sure that you know fucking like stealth uh, my stealth systems are like playing all your solid five is like this Come man on, is making man. fucking Come video on. games yeah um neil Druckmann, obviously gameplay for last was too great gameplay for uncharted 4 and last was great but like i think he values storytelling on a level that i could see him being more like 
yeah, I might as well just make a movie, even more so than even just a Kojima making a movie. What would be cool is if, you know, he, Neil left Naughty Dog, right? Leaves video games behind. Yeah. And then he comes out on the Game Awards stage and joins Kojima's Avengers of Horror oh, Games God, or whatever. That'd be crazy. You know what I mean? That'd be insane. Like, it's perfect. I'm, I'm here. Oh. I'm contributing. I'm doing the thing. And to the Kojima thing, I, one critique that I have of, uh, of Kojima is that, like, as he gets older, it feels like he doesn't have a protege like it feels like he doesn't oh yeah have, we talked about this before yeah somebody is bringing up and which is terrifying you know, it was just terrifying and like i i he, hope he retires and every kojima production like all right well cool shut back it, it up down. <laughs> Turn it down. change the name to like <laughs> <laughs> um but i hope that there's somebody under neil Druckmann. like i don't know if he's ever talked about that either but oh like, i mean see like i'll stop you there right yeah. where i feel like you do see that already at Naughty Dog. Like, mm -hmm. Kurt, who's been around forever, right? Like, him coming up, and I think I'm going to talk out of turn, but I, I want to say he was he directed Lost Legacy along with somebody. And then something else more recently. Last was 2 Remastered? Maybe. Like, the real light mode? Was that? No, yeah. maybe. I don't know, I but I'm saying that. you're seeing people there, and Kurt is a big deal at Naughty Dog now after being, you know, just a dude there forever. And it's the same thing of, like, not being on the inside of Naughty Dog, who really knows? But, you know, Neil's co-president of Naughty Dog now, right? And it's like, that's the kind of shit where you start getting that high up on the ladder. Like, I don't know. I don't think he's probably doing much day-to-day -day Naughty Dog video game. Div you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. Vision stuff and ideas, yeah, and yada, yada, yada. But, like, I don't know. I think there's a lot of people underneath him. Was last was online? Or was no, online? I don't know. I mean, who knows what he was on last. Let me, let's see what, if I can dig anything up while we start winding the show down. Um, but, yeah, that's it. Fuck yeah, you. Sure. Anyway, we'll hey, you can you week. find anything? Like, yeah, Kurt's just listed on Twitter as game director at Naughty Dog. Uh, Last of Us Part 2, uh, Uncharted Lost Legacy. Uh, he's been there over like, 15 Somebody years. went on stage with him about The Last of Us Online, I'm pretty sure, at the Summer Game Fest thing where they announced it. Last of Us Online, oh, director. There's also uh, Sean Eskeg, who's uh, co-director on Lost Legacy. Yeah. Uh, Vinit Agarwal. The game director for Last of Us Online. There we go. So I wonder what project they're moving on to now. And then also, who's the um, who's, who's the other writer on Last of Us Two? Haley. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking of. Yeah. Is she still in Naughty Dog? No. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but she was like, she was only she was signed up for that project. Yeah, she, she had like some weird title that wasn't like a full time Naughty Dog person mm -hmm. or whatever. She was just there doing that thing. Yeah. Well, now it's time for PlayStation Picks. Picks, picks, The drop picks, looks picks, like this. Uh, picks, brothers, speaking of Joseph Ferris, Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons remake is out this week for PS5. Star Wars, Dark Forces the remaster. Uh, brothers, no. Yeah. I think I would like it. It was a big deal at the time, I remember, at IGN, but yeah, I never actually did anything with it because it was I, Xbox. But is it like a co-op co game? If memory serves, Barrett, you can look it up and get it for me. I think... No, it's... It was you had... It was, uh, Barrett, shut up. It was that you had one. I love you, Barry. I'm not, I don't mean to shut up in a bad way. I just want to get it up and see if I'm right. It wasn't co-op. It was that it was like where one stick was one character on one screen and one yeah. stick was the other character on the screen. Gotcha. Is that right? It. Yeah. Okay. Because, yeah, I try to play that game on uh, online co-op with a friend and we booted up and we're like, oh, nope, this ain't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> and I forget what the, well, I forget what the deal was. Um but yeah, I I'm, I like a way a way out, and it takes two so much that I want to get around to Brothers Tales Two Sons remake. But it's the thing where I'm like, Bolatro. Yeah, I gotta play Bolatro. I'm almost eight wins deep. <laughs> I'm not. I'm almost like four wins deep. But good enough. We'll get there. Uh, Star Wars Dark Forces remaster for PS5, PS4 is out this week. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is out for PS5, and then Beat the Beats arrives on PSVR two. Beat the Beats. And that's it for PlayStation picks, ladies and gentlemen. That's another episode of PS I Love You. XO, XO in the books. Remember, if you want to be a part of next week's episode, uh, write in with your questions, comments, concerns, and topics over at kindoffunny.com slash P-S-I-L-Y. I'll say it again. Don't write into my Instagram DMs. <laughs> kindoffunny.com slash P-S-I-L-Y. If you love what we do here at Kind of Funny and on PS I Love You, XO, XO, why not pick up a Kind of Funny membership on Patreon or YouTube? Of course, if you do, you get to watch us record the show live. You get the ability to watch the other podcasts podcast record live you get the, all the shows everything we do ad free and of course you get my daily vlog series greg way until next time it's been our pleasure to serve you